Hey, this is Jersey Drozd, and this is the commentary track to an inking and toning demonstration, part one, uh, for a commission that I did for Jamie Gamble. And I start with the actual graphite pencils. This is a technique I've started using recently where I actually scan the graphite pencils and print them out in blue. Why do I do this? It's so that I have, a, if, I, if I screw up the inks, I can always print out a new one. Uh, I don't have to be so precious about my inking. I use uh, Higgins Black Magic ink and the Hunts 102 Crow Quill for the process. Uh, Higgins Black Magic ink it has a, a really good viscosity for using the 102 Crow Quill in my experience. I've tried using other inks like um, Pelican and Speedball uh, Super Black. And uh, I've never been quite as happy with the flow you get out of those pen that those kinds of inks. Uh, the Black Magic isn't quite as opaque as the other inks I mentioned, but uh, it just it it's, it just works great for the the 102 Crow Quill with the kind of Bristol I use. Yeah, the Bristol too, I should say. I use um, Utrecht House brand. I don't use the Strathmore 300 series. Um, the Utrecht House brand is a little bit thinner. And it's got a, it's got a little bit more tooth to it than say like the the uh, Strathmore 300 series smooth finish, um, and it, it's uh, because of its thinness, it's not so good for uh, doing brush work or filling in the blacks with a brush because uh, the the paper tends to warp and buckle a little bit. So I don't I I tend not to fill in my blacks on my finished inks. I usually do that in Photoshop, which you'll see in part two when we get to the actual digital cleanup and toning. So rule one of learning how to use the 102 Crow Quill is that when you're starting out, the lesson I learned the hard way is you tend to have to drag toward yourself. And you can see in the video how I'm turning the page around a lot as I'm working because uh, the pen can only move in so many directions. As you get used to it and get more uh, acclimated to it, you can you can move it around uh, sideways and even push it forward. But uh, as a general rule of thumb, when you're dragging the pen, you have to drag toward yourself or drag in, in one direction where you're dragging away from the actual tip of the pen. As far as filling the crow quill, uh, when you look at one up close, there's a little hole uh, just before the, the split. In the, like if you're going from like the actual hilt of the pen holder to the tip, just before you get to where the tines, the two, the two t uh, tip pieces split, there's a hole there. I just dip the pen into my inkwell uh, a little, just, just enough so that that hole is filled with ink. You don't want to overfill it because then uh, you have the tendency, or not tendency, but the, the, the potential to uh, get big blobs of ink on your page. And uh, what I love about the Crow Quill, and it's the same reason people have reported on liking the brush a lot, is that with just a little bit of pressure, you can get a, a wide degree of line value. Uh, as I'm going around doing the outer contours of this character, uh, all I have to do is just press a little harder to get a, a thicker line, and then. You, but you can also uh, use a very fine touch to get a very thin uh, pencil line. You'll see that when we get to some of the, the finer details that I'm doing. Why do I start with the outer contour? This is a stylistic thing that I, I've sort of developed for myself is I am fascinated by contours. I really like the idea of being able to render the entire side of a figure with one fluid line. Now these lines, obviously you can see that there's uh, different kinds of lines. It's not one smooth line that uh, determines the out outer edge of this woman's body. There's those little wrinkles at her hips, or just above her hips. But to try, to try to render that all in one stroke, if possible, is something I've... Uh, gotten to be very interested in, in in recent years in my inking uh and when, when i when i when it's done well uh i really enjoy it in other people's work i, I was mostly inspired uh by the work of matsutsuki yamakami uh, who is a manga artist who did the loop in the third series you guys have heard me talk about him before so yes i try to do the contour first um which slows me down a little bit because um i have to wait for sides of the page to dry, like when I render one whole side. Uh, unlike a marker or even some brush pens, like if you use like the, the what is it, the Sakura Micron brush pens, uh, the ink dries very, very quickly. Uh, not so with the Black Magic. It's a very liquidy ink, and so you, I, I tend to have to stop, and I keep a space heater under my desk to put the 
uh, artwork in front of and just turn on the space heater for a little bit to dry the ink a little faster. So, yeah, sometimes I'll go in and do some of the finer details as I'm working, but for the most part, I try to do the outer contour first. And this is also a warm-up exercise because uh, this gets my hand kind of used to using the pen if I haven't inked in a few days. Um, doing those finer uh, details, like uh, the shoelaces on the girl's boot, you have to have a quick stroke. If you move slowly with the pen, uh, the wobble will show uh, very, very clearly. And the way I like to render uh, folds, even on like folds like the leather around the, the boot ankles or the folds coming up that I'm about to ink on her skirt, uh, you have to do them in quick, confident strokes with the crow quill. Same with, same with as the brush. Uh, to avoid seeing that wobble. It's a little bit different when you're doing the outer contours because if you pr you're pressing harder, at least in, in the style I uh, work in where you're dealing with like a, a nice thick outer stroke, uh, because you're, you're, you can press your hand to the paper and use that uh, friction to sort of uh, smooth out the line. You hold your hand steady. Uh, this is one of the reasons that I've been reluctant to really dive into the brush uh, until very recently when, it, recently when I started working with uh, the, the color brush pen, which I still love. The Pentel color brush pen is a great pen. But uh, it doesn't give me the kind of tight cleanliness that I can get with a 102 crow quill. Now, I know there's lots of different kinds of crow quills. There's lots of different sizes. Uh, I, I think, in my experience, I've played around with a, different, a lot of different uh, tips. And, uh, but it's, it's been years, and maybe I should go back and, and reinvestigate some different tips. But I find that the, the crow quill, once it's broken in... And it usually takes three, maybe two to three pages to really break one in. Once it's broken in, it, it is dynamite how uh, versatile it is, how you can get, see these lines I'm doing on her hair right now, um, where you can get these, these just razor thin strokes as well as some nice bold lines on the outside of her form. So yes, once the outer contour is rendered and dried, I go in and start doing these little chicken scratch lines, and I try to do these in as quick of a stroke as possible. I should note here that this, this video is sped up. Uh, it's, it's playing at 200% right now. It's playing at double speed. So I obviously don't ink this fast. I wish I did. And uh, in between uh, lines, when I'm waiting for the, the, the piece to dry, I'll wipe off the, the... I keep a piece of paper towel or a tissue handy, and I wipe off the tip on that. I, I'm not terribly fastidious with taking care of my tips because they don't last very long anyway. Um, I, I, I really couldn't give you a, an accurate estimate of how long uh, a crow quill will last you, but usually I can get maybe like six or seven pages out of one. Uh, and then, and I, as I've said before in other podcasts, I keep two pens in rotation. I keep my more broken in older one, the one that's no good for doing uh, fine details when it's, it's it live, outlived its usefulness, that one becomes my tip for doing really thick lines. Like if I'm doing an extreme close-up of something, I want something in the foreground, like a rock formation or something to really pop from what's in the background. That, that's the pen I'll break out for those lines. But uh, my newer one is, uh, tends to be used for just general contours and also fine detail, like what I'm doing right now in the piece. Um, as far as getting those strokes, uh, those those thin chicken scratch strokes uh, for folds, like what I'm doing on her skirt, um, this is a muscle memory thing. This just comes with time uh, and practice. Uh, I, I wasn't always so adept at nailing the stroke the first time. It's just you, you use the pen. Like I've been using the, the Crow Quill now since about 2002, so eight years. Uh, you do enough folds and you just have a muscle memory for where to put those lines. It's just, this is something where the only advice I can give is just practice, practice, practice. So, and again, even though I'm, I, when I'm doing these fine chicken scratch fold uh, pen lines, I'm still generally dragging away from the tip of the pen. Even when I turn my hand uh, to do certain contours, you can see that I'm still dragging back away from where the tip is pointed always. That, that's generally the best way to do it. Um, just, just to avoid, uh, if, if, if you try to push the pen forward like you would with like a ballpoint or a, um, or a felt tip, the tines will split apart. They'll catch on the fibers of the paper, and the tines will split apart, and you'll uh, spread ink all over the place. And uh, then you got to print out a new uh, page of pencils. So here I'm outlining the blacks 
Now, on this piece, it's a very simple piece, so I'm not really worried about knowing where to fill in my blacks, and there's only one major area where I'm going to be filling in blacks on this piece, so I'm not bothering to make any special marks, any kind of uh, information after I scanned it to, to notify me this is where you have to fill in the black stars. But generally, when I'm working on a, a comics page, I'll fill in those blacks areas with just a little X, a little X to indicate to me when I'm doing the digital cleanup, fill this area in with black. It's just a little note to make to yourself because these blue lines won't be there anymore once I scan it. And that's the whole purpose of using blue lines. And so here's, here's another uh, example of why the crow, the crow quill is so cool is I'm throwing down just these, uh, these wiggly, wobbly little uh, crack lines to make this wall behind this woman look uh, all you know damaged and old and worn. And so the crow quill can give you these beautiful smooth lines like a brush, but it can also give you these neurotic uh, wiggly, oh, look at that, look at that. See what happens if you don't use the pen right? I got a big old splotch where the tines split apart and ink got on the paper. But guess what? I'm going to fix that in post, meaning I'm going to fix that when I go to digital. So I let it, I, I leave it on the page and uh, just resume inking as soon as it's dry enough for me to not have to worry about smudging it. So I go back to, uh, oh, but as I was saying, with the, uh, the lines you can get is, yeah, you can get these, like, these Robert Crumb neurotic wiggly little lines as well as very graceful lines. So you don't have to do a lot of switching between tools. I'm the kind of artist who gets really annoyed with having to switch between uh, multiple tools. I try to get uh, one tool to do the most that it can for me. And also, in terms of line value, uh, I've, I've worked with Microns before, and I continue to work with Microns on um, freelance illustration jobs when the job requires it. But the problem I have with them is that you can't get that kind of line value with just one stroke. You have to use multiple strokes. And that's why I taught myself how to use the Crow Quill, because I wanted to speed up my work and also, I wanted the, the line values to look a little bit more natural, like the kind of artists that I respect who use the tool. Um, and and, and th I think that's, that's the advice for anybody who wants to learn any tool, is you should only want to learn it because an artist that you admire uh, is using that tool, and, and they're doing something with the art that you think is really exciting, and you want to explore that in your own work. Uh, you shouldn't just do it just because, oh, that's what the pros use, that's all. It has to, it has to do something for the work that you want to appear in your work always. So that's why I think there's no right or wrong tool. Um, so, okay, and now I'm in the finishing stage, uh, finishing up some of those neurotic little wiggly lines for the cracks uh, and the bricks. And, and when you see the, the final piece up close, you'll see that those lines are very, very different than what I did for the fold lines on her skirt and her hair and the outer contours of her body. Again, that's, for me, what makes the crow quill sing. So as I finish this one up, you'll see in a moment I'm going to throw my signature on there, and that means it's done. Uh, watch out for part two where I'm going to explore some, uh, some of the digital cleanup techniques. I'm going to fix that blotch at the bottom, how I'm going to fill in the blacks, and clean up some of the overlapping lines that I got on here. I don't worry about that at this stage. I do that all in Photoshop. And then I'm going to walk through the process of doing uh, flatting and then finally the half toning. So that will be coming up soon. So... Thanks for watching, everybody, and thanks for supporting the Art and Story Supreme content. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, until next time, I've been Jersey Drozd. Okay, bye.